Now, the nice thing about configuring the first access point is that every access point of the same model that you add after takes the parameters of the first one you configured. Because most of the time you want them the same way, right? Yes. So you want to add, add APs in um, where you want them to go. And I'm just tossing them in here. I'm not really um, thinking about the plan right now. So now I've got uh, my APs kind of thrown out there and I can change my visualization from empty so I can look at different things. And one of the, the big things Kevin was talking about is making sure you're, you're planning for the devices that are going to be in that space and what they're going to be doing. So here you can look for things like data rate. So if I want to look at the data rate in that area, I can see data rates. I can look for um, capacity health, channel width, um, noise if I had done a physical site survey, or throughput. So I can look for actual throughput in areas, and this will give me my visualization for throughput. And obviously, uh, this is set up where the visualization green is good and red is bad. That's traditional thinking, right? Green is go and red is stop, so that's good. You can also change that color scale, so it's more of a heat map, so red is a hotter, you know, richer color. This depends on what you're used to doing and what you want to explain to your customer. So you can just keep adding APs through here and those bad areas will become good. Notice uh, that neither one of us, and, and we didn't talk about this ahead of time before uh, we started recording this, neither one of us put an access point in the hallway. Now deploying in the hallway is not a good idea unless you purposely want to cover the hallway. Uh, deploying APs in the hallway leads to hidden node problems and near far problems and it really uh, degrades your throughput. And here he's chosen signal strength to match more of what, what we were talking about earlier. And does that look like we're getting the signal strength we wanted? In most places, except for the gray area. So you can add some APs in there. And uh, sometimes you have to put one in the big open space because it is a big open space. But now just a, a few APs, he's got coverage everywhere. And that's a stairwell. And again, some of the, uh, the fire codes may not allow you to put APs in a stairwell, but you can certainly bleed the coverage over like on the other two stairwells. See, there's coverage in there now. And you can do what he's doing, move the APs around a little bit. Sometimes moving an AP is the best thing to do. Just move it. Move it further into the design and it'll keep the signal more retained in the building and less outside or move it farther away from something if it's too hot. If you've got, in this scenario, if I had green overlapping with green, I would separate the APs more because green is far exceeding the, the coverage requirements we have. In this one little corner, somebody in that far office where you just were, they might complain when I'm near the window, I don't get a signal uh, to do what I need to do. So you can drop an AP in there. So you can find the coverage holes and drop in access points. And now you've got a really well-planned design based on uh, what we wanted to, to see. Now, if you were doing auto placement, you would put in the number of clients you expect to have. You could estimate the types of clients you, you were supposed to have. And it does a pretty good job of putting them in there and avoiding things like you know, the um, elevator shafts if you draw an exclusion area around it. But if you don't, you might have to go move an AP anyway. And if you're gonna auto plan and then have to go move access points around, why not just place them all by hand in the first place and make sure they're exactly the way you want them? This is a large portion of science, but it's also a combination of art and experience as you start adding these in here. So as you start adding more and more APs, you can find out that I've got too much coverage. You know, too much coverage can create uh, problems just like not enough coverage creates a problem. So you wanna make sure that you're doing what, what I like to call right-sizing your network getting enough APs to get the job done and have some resiliency, have some redundancy. So if you have um, one AP go down for some reason, maybe the, the cable becomes unplugged or somebody's in the server room and they unplug an AP by mistake, the other APs are still gonna provide some coverage for you in that area, but not having so many APs that you can't have a, a decent channel plan. And the customer's looking at you thinking, I don't have that budget. One of the most beautiful things I think about deploying ruckus APs is they use Beamflex and, and you can use Beamflex Plus. I've run designs and I've gotten 50% or, or just maybe 60% of the APs deployed with ruckus 
versus the 100% with other brands and still having the same coverage and the same throughput, supporting the same number of clients because of the proprietary BeamFlex and BeamFlex Plus technology in our access points. So it allows you to do a lot more with fewer cable drops and fewer APs. Uh, just you have to right size the network and not, not over uh, deploy because that, that can create a lot of problems.